Welcome to Introduction to Logic. Um, my name is Mark Vopat, and I'm going to be your instructor in this course, although you'll never be seeing me, aside from possibly popping in um, to an online office or if you were to come to my office on campus. Um, what I'd like to do in this sort of introductory video is just go over a few of the sort of key things that you should know as you begin the course. So everything I'm going to talk about here is actually contained within the Blackboard course already. It's within the modules, it's in the introduction section, it's in the syllabus and so forth. But these are just a few of the important things that I want to make sure that you are aware of. So with that, I'm just going to go right into some of the basics of the course. How to get in touch with me. Um, there are several ways I give for you to get in touch with me. Obviously, um, if you are on or near campus and would like to see me, I have an office in DeBartolo, 426. Um, the office hours are posted on the Blackboard site. So if you are close enough to come in, if you do need help with course material or want to talk about something, you can come during my office hours or you can schedule a time to meet with me outside of those hours. I am usually on campus um, at least Monday through Thursday. Um, so I'm available at other times as well. Um, I do have an online office, as I call it, my Skype, um, Logic 1701. So if you would like to meet, if you can't make it to campus and you would like to talk about the course or your grades or something and you don't want to do it by email or phone, if you'd like to do it, you can also Skype me. I would ask that you please set up a Skype appointment so that I know when to expect a call from you. Um, so we can meet by Skype email is probably the best way to get in touch with me. I do check that several times a day. So if you have a question about the course or assignments or whatever, um, please feel free to email me at any time. I prefer regular email over the Blackboard email system. Um, I find that I can get back to you much quicker through regular email than the Blackboard system because I'm not always inside the course or have the course up and running on my computer. So if you do that, then you're um, sure to get in touch with me. I'm sure to be able to get back to you in a timely fashion. Um, if there is something important that you need to talk about, you can't reach me um, on campus or you don't want to do it over email. Also, you may call me. Um, I give you my home phone number, which really isn't my home phone number. It's a Google Voice number. So you should know if you've never called a Google Voice number that it will ask you to state your name and then we'll send that through. We'll forward that to my phone so I know who it is. So Please, if you get this weird machine asking you for your name, that is the correct number, just the way the Google Voice number works. So that will forward to me. The other thing I do with the course is I have a course Twitter account set up. Um, this is a place for me not to tell you what I've had for lunch or what's going on you know, in my life. This is to just send out reminders about course material. So if you would like to, if you have a Twitter account, if you have a Twitter app, you can just simply... Um, subscribe or follow me on Twitter on Logic1701. If you don't use Twitter or you don't have an app that you want to use, you can simply go to the twitter.com forward slash Logic1701 in your browser and you can look at the posts that are there. So that's something that I will periodically send things out just as reminders. But that's not necessary that you actually use that. It's just a nice sort of extra thing if you happen to be a Twitter user. Course requirements. There are really only two things that you are going to be graded on in this course. The first are going to be homework assignments. So at the end of each of the modules, there is a homework assignment for you to do that comes directly from your textbook. So that will be clearly spelled out in the section of the Blackboard course that says what to do and when to do it. At the very end, the last thing that you will be doing after you've read the textbook, you've watched the video lectures, you've tried problems on your own, what I call the self-work, then there will be a homework assignment usually consisting of two to four problems or so that you will be sending to me. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you're going to be doing that later. Those will be worth approximately 40% of your grade. So they're 5% each. Um, I don't actually have a point system with these because depending on the assignment there some may have three problems there might be four problems there might be two problems so those will be graded just like anything else a b c as a percentage and 80 and 90 100 um, whatever it happens to be but that will ultimately all be once the final calculation is made be worth 40 percent of your overall grade there will also be three exams in the class the first exam will come after the um, unit six in your book 
So this will cover truth tables. I know you don't know what truth tables are. Possibly you don't know what truth tables are. But the material that deals with that will come after Unit 6. There will be exam after Unit 7 and 8. And then there will be a, a last exam. I'm not going to call it a final because it's not a cumulative exam in the traditional sense, um, which will cover the material from Unit 9. And those three exams together will be worth 60% of your grade. And those will be available on the Blackboard site. As you look down at the various course modules, you'll see that the exams are there. Right now, those exams are empty. There's nothing in those. But as the exam time approaches, um, there will be an exam there. Okay, so what do you need for the course? Um, first, there is the textbook for the course. There's one book for the course, Understanding Symbolic Logic. It's the fifth edition of the book. Now, there are several different editions of this book. There have been several editions. There's a third and fourth edition that are still sometimes available. You really do need the fifth edition of this text. So the exercises that I've put down as your homework assignments, those are all reference to the fifth edition. Earlier editions of the book, many of the problem sets are the same in the fourth edition, for example, but um, the numbers don't line up anymore. So you must have the book. We will be using the book. You'll be expected to read the book. So for those who ask, do I need to buy a textbook for this class? Absolutely. Um, the course is designed around the Virginia Clank um, symbolic logic textbook. So you need that to do the assignments um, to do the problem sets and the references I make in the video lectures are to this edition. You will also need scanning software. Now for those of you who have a printer that scans or that um, have scanner, a scanner, a flatbed scanner, some other sort of scanner, that's fine. You don't need then to buy any scanning software. If you do not have a scanner, you will need to be able to scan and email your homework assignments to me. So whatever scanning software that you actually use, it must be able to send out as a PDF. All right, so I don't actually care which. I'm going to give you two suggestions for um, those of you who don't have a flatbed scanner or printer that scans, um, you know, multi-purpose sort of printer. You can use your cell phone, and there's some very good programs out there that allow you to scan your work. Because Symbolic Logic deals with a lot of symbols, um, logic symbols with specialized characters, having you attempt to type out your assignments would be a real hassle. It's very difficult to do on a standard keyboard. Um, it's much easier if you can simply write out your homework assignment, um, doing the proofs or the exercises that I have you do, and then just simply take a picture with your phone and convert that into a PDF. And so that also allows me to grade them using my um, iPad, or I can simply write on the assignment to show you what you've done to make corrections and then send you back um, an edited version of your homework assignment as if it was done on paper. So you're going to need the software, and I'll talk a little bit about two options that you have, although, again, as long as you find software that allows you to scan with your phone and send as a PDF, that's fine. I don't care what the software is, but there are, there are a couple of very inexpensive packages out there or applications out there that you can use. So here I have two screenshots of two scanning uh, apps for your phone. If you're a iPhone user, Scanner Pro 7 is a very good app. It's the one that I happen to prefer for my own needs when I need to scan something and send it when I need to scan and then um, send it to a PDF editor and send out is Scanner Pro. It's a very good program. Um, both of these programs, I believe, are around 6 or $7 and can be downloaded from either the App Store or um, the Google Play Store. So if you're an Android user, ScanBot is probably one of the best out there. These two are very similar, Scanner Pro and ScanBot, so really you can't go wrong with either one. But both of them will allow you to take a what you've written, take a picture of it, convert it to a PDF, and email it directly from the app. And they will also allow you to do multi-page PDFs. So when sending an assignment, if your homework assignment, the problems that you're assigned, take more than a single page, please don't send me individual pages. What I'd like is a multi-page um, PDF. So you should always send multi-page PDFs to me. 
when you're submitting homework. Now this early on you may not actually need that one page may do it. I'd also ask that when you write out your homework assignments um, make sure you're at least using your writing at least dark enough. If you can use pen that's fine. I understand when doing proofs and things you may prefer pencil. Just use a darker lead in the pencil not something light or at least press hard enough so that when you do take the picture it is visible to me. Oftentimes um, submitting in pencil especially if it's light it doesn't always um, convert well, but both of these programs also have a black and white feature, which will make it stand out more. So it doesn't take much to learn the programs. It's very point and click and then a quick edit and tell it that you want it in black and white. And generally that will, will give the best result. So send me multi-page PDFs. The other thing I would ask is that when you submit, and I mentioned this in um, this intro section, that when you email me your assignments, one, you'll send them directly to the email address I gave you, my YSU email address. But in the subject line, I'd ask that you put the following. Bracket, logic, and then assignment, and then whatever number that assignment is. So if it's number three, for example, you'd put assignment number three. Now the reason I want this very specific sort of format in the subject line is to allow me to sort the email electronically. So the minute you send me assignment, it doesn't get lost in some kind of filter. It doesn't get lost amongst all the other email. This is all automatically sorted into a separate folder that I could respond to directly. So whenever you submit an assignment, please put it in this form. You, you must use the brackets put logic assignment and if it's assignment one assignment two whatever it happens to be just put it um, within the brackets if you send it this way then I can be sure that it will show up in the folder if you do not send me the assignment using this format then I cannot guarantee that it will be graded so you must use this format um, in the subject line so this is the subject line of the email that you'll be sending me should have brackets logic assignment and then the number assignment so it's assignment and what you say after logic and assignment is fine if you want to say module one module two whatever it happens to be or assignment and then just the number that's fine but the word logic has to be in there and that's going to help me sort through the emails that I'm going to be getting and keep straight your assignment what this will also allow me to do is once you've sent me an assignment I can immediately mark it up grade it and send it back to you as a graded assignment so Again, this will just help streamline this whole process. Some tips for success. Um, there are a number of things you can do to make this course um, go better for you. The first is to rec refer to the course checklist on a regular basis. So the course checklist will have been mailed out to you um, before the course begins or the day the course begins. The course checklist has due dates for when you are expected to complete the work from each of the modules. It tells you what you should be doing and gives a literal checkbox for you to check off. So I highly recommend that you um, download the checklist and print it up and keep it as an actual physical copy. It often helps just to be able to look over and say, what date is this due? What am I expected to do? Now, all of the things that are on the checklist are actually in the course modules. But sometimes when, again, you're not logged into the course, you're not at your computer, you want to have the reference, what have I still got to do, what's coming up, all of the dates for things on there are on the course checklist. Contact the instructor. I know this sounds obvious, but do not wait until you are way behind or that you don't understand and are trying to make up the work to contact me. If you are having trouble with the material, then you should contact me as soon as as you encounter this trouble. So don't wait, don't come to me five or six weeks into the course and say, you know, I was having a really tough time and I was struggling with this and I'm falling behind. I can't help you if you've already gone five or six weeks in and are so far behind that it's difficult, if not impossible to catch up. So don't be afraid to contact me, to email me. Um, this is the first time the course is being taught online. So there's there are going to be some kinks in the system. Um, I will be most likely adding material, for example, extra example problems and things in the course. But there's also the ability given um, Blackboard to do some um, tutorial sort of sessions, live tutorial sessions with the whiteboard that they have built into the system. These are possibilities. So if I find that there are a number of you having trouble, maybe we'll work on 
adapting the course and seeing if there's some other ways that we can um, get some extra time in. But again, this course is asynchronous, so it's not expected that you have to show up anywhere at a specific time. But the only way I know you're having trouble and we can work for a solution is if you actually contact me and let me know. So please do contact the minute you're having trouble with something um, with the course material so that we can, you know, we can attempt to fix it. Um, regularly check course announcements. I will put announcements within the Blackboard course. Um, there's the announcement sent the, the announcement area. I often update all my online courses with announcements. It might be a reminder. It might be a clarification about something. It might be the announcement that there's a new supplemental video in the course or lecture. There's another proof that I'm going to do for you that I've, I've posted on the site. Um, it might be a change in a due date. So all of those things will be put up in the course announcement. So make sure you do check those. Um, Contribute to the general discussion board. There is no mandatory discussion here aside from introducing yourself in the first module. I ask that you do introduce, introduce yourself to the class. Um, outside of that, the discussion boards for each of the modules are solely for you and your fellow students to interact. And this can include when you're doing problems or working on your self-work in the course um, that you post a PDF up there of a problem you're having and saying here I've gotten this far on this part on this problem and does anyone else has anyone else figured this out or you can see can anyone see where I'm going wrong or I have a question about the material or did anyone else notice X all of those things you can do in each of those discussion posts those are completely optional I will occasionally go in there and look at those and see if there's things that I can help out with but it's really a way for you to communicate with the other students in the class now I've mentioned several times the self work if it's not obvious already, the self-work is um, the problems that are in the answers to which are in the back of, back of your book. So in each of the chapters, there are starred problems that um, will give you answers in the back. When I say you are responsible for the self-work, what that means is you are responsible for going over the starred problems. And that, it, that usually will mean you will attempt the problems, you'll sit down on your own, Look at the start problems, attempt to answer them, go in the back of the book, check your work, see what you did wrong, sort of try those problems again when you get it wrong, try it again. Close, you know, don't look in the back, turn the piece of paper over, try the problem again. Early on, there won't be as much um, ability to do this. Some of the problems are either you either get it right or you don't. Later on, as we start doing truth tables and as we do proofs, as you'll, as you'll learn, these are things that even if you've done them, You've checked your work in the back. You see where you make a mistake. You go back and start over. Um, it is extremely beneficial to you to do it more than one time. So some of the problems early on might not be. As you go on, it it will be beneficial for you to go back and forth and sort of work the problem out on your own. See where you've made the mistake. Then try the problem over again. Um, do not skip the self-work. Um, one of the things, whether you're taking logic online or you would be taking it with me on campus in a classroom, is that you will not do well in logic unless you do problems on your own. So you are obviously required at the end of each unit to submit to me work, a, a number of problems, you know, two, three, four problems for me to grade. But there is no substitution for doing the problems regularly. So in certain units, you will have two weeks um, in order to do a single chapter in the textbook. Um, those two weeks, or at least a good portion, a week, week and a half of that, should be you not only watching the video lectures, but then doing problems on your own. And once you've become comfortable with those problems, or once you've gotten the hang of them, and that might include trying some problems, struggling with them, you contact me if you have a real problem that you can't figure it out. And then at the end, you then sit down and do those homework assignments, right? those homework problems that you're going to submit for a grade. So that self-work is essential. If you simply watch the video lecture and go right to the problems, odds are you will not do well or it'll be very difficult for you to do well. Um, so you really do want to go over those started problems. Follow the directions in the book. Um, the Clank book is very good about presenting material to you sort of step by step so that you sort of introduces you to new ideas and new concepts before it throws you into the really hard sort of problems and the problems that you're going to be submitting for homework. So please do, this, do the self-work. Don't skip it. Do those starred problems in the book. 
and that's also will give you a good gauge of how you're doing on the exam. So if you start doing the, the self-work problems, the SARD problems, you're getting them. You send the homework assignments, you get the feedback from me on those, how well you did on the homework assignment. Then when it comes to test time, you should be more than prepared to do um, the exams on the material. Okay, what I want to do now is just give you a quick tour of Blackboard just to point out a few things on the course site. So obviously you're already in the Blackboard site. This is a little bit different than other Blackboard um, online courses through Blackboard that you might have taken. This is the Blackboard Ultra and all of the courses at YSU will eventually be changed to this Ultra look. But I want to just so, sort of point out the basic structure of the course if you haven't already played around with the various modules and looked in them. just want to give you a, a brief overview of how the course is structured and where you find certain information. Okay, so here we are in the Blackboard course, the Blackboard Ultra course. Um, this obviously is the view I have. I have the student preview, so mine might look a little bit different than yours as I'm instructor, but here you have the basics, right? So we have the roster, the Blackboard Collaborate. If we were to do a live session through Blackboard, that's where we'd do it. Um, attendance is obviously not an issue um, as the course is asynchronous and you do this, you work on your time. Um, there's the announcement section I mentioned. I do make announcements in the course um, on a regular basis, so you definitely want to make sure you check those. And usually they will tell you if there's an announcement um, a new announcement has been posted. And then you've got books and tools, which add, are the additional Blackboard tools. And also if you wanted to buy the textbook through the Blackboard site. Again, you can do, you can purchase the book through the YSU bookstore or online. There's a number of ways to get it to either buy or rent the textbook. You see the course here as I'm recording this. Course basics to start here. I've got the syllabus posted. So here you can download a copy of the syllabus if you'd like, but all the information I've mentioned is right here, the required textbook, um, the breakdown of exams and homework assignments. These are all listed here as well. And I've got a basic sort of week by week what we're going to be covering. Now the course checklist that would have been mail emailed out to you already is gonna give you more detail. Um, this is just a general overview of what's covered in the various weeks. All right, so this is in the course basic section you've got the course structure and summary so i've actually talked about this already what you should be doing start by reading the textbook then going to the video lecture um, looking watching the videos um, looking at the example problems if that's applicable depending on applicable depending on what the chapter is the self-work is the start problems that you're expected to do um, there might be modules with additional tutorials or example problems, so you can watch those as well. Those are optional. Obviously, if you get it from the lecture, you're following in the book, and you, you're doing well, then you don't have to watch those. And then each will have the assignment where I mentioned in there that format. So you can see on here where you'll be emailing the subject line, brackets, logic, and then unit one assignment or assignment number, any of those things that give me a description of what it is that's um, attached. And again, that will most likely, for most of you, I suspect, will be sent from your phone. From others, if you have a scanner and you email it, just make sure that in the subject line you have that format. So there's the structure of the course, um, some course basics. That's where this video is where you've been watching. Um, and then there's the course checklist, which again will also be sent out to you. So if you lose the checklist, you wanna go get it again, it's also there posted on that on the site here. Now each of the modules are structured exactly the same way. So the introduction introductory module has a what to do and when to do it. So this lists out so you know here's the learning objectives objectives for each module and then there's the textbook where what part of the textbook are we covering? What video is there to watch? The self work will tell you which sections. Now you want to be careful. Um, I shouldn't say careful. You want to make sure you read which self-work sections to do. Some of them I actually do have you skip. Um, it's material that I'm not particularly interested in testing you on, for example, or don't think is essential. So I want you to focus on the things that are, are relevant for the homework assignment and your eventual exam. Um, and so in this case, in module one, there is no assignment. So module one is an overview of logic and the nature of logic. 
there is no assignment. The, the problems in the back are interesting if you'd like to look at them, but they're not something that I'm going to actually be um, grading you on. So go into the second. Um, well, I've got unit one. We can go to the lecture. You'll see that these lectures can are, are posted on um, YouTube. This is a way in which I can get the lectures closed captioned. So if you do need closed captioning there, um, they, of course, also can be expanded. You can watch them within the course, or you can expand it by clicking on the YouTube link and expand. So you see this is the this is the way all the lectures will be presented. And of course, you can expand that on your screen if you do the expansion right in the corner here. Right, that will allow you to expand it on your computer. So that's the basic structure of each of the modules. And you can see that as you go down in here, each of these can be expanded or collapsed. As we go along, you don't have to have them open. All the units are there, and then the exams are listed, as you can see. The exams are um, going to be given to you. You'll have one week to complete the exam. So once you finish the material that I expect you to know for the exam, um, so between and the first exam, as I mentioned, we'll cover everything to do with truth tables. And so those will be the first six units in the book. After you finish those first six units, um, you've done the homework assignment for each of those. It's time for the exam. You have one week to complete the exam. Depending on the material being covered, some of the exams will be done completely online. So you will simply go through and answer the questions within the exam. Other exams will be presented as assignments where you will do them and upload them to Blackboard for me to grade. So it's going to depend. It will vary depending on the material. But those exams, that means that that week of class, you will have time to do. Most logic um, exams are problems. And some of these problems can take um, a fair amount of time to do. So I want to give you time to actually prepare to try more example problems, to look over, and then to actually take the exam. But I will talk about more, of the, more about the exams as they approach, and they I will most likely create an announcement to sort of spell out what you should be doing, um, to both to prepare and submit the exams to me. But this is the structure again. It follows a standard sort of pattern. What you will also see on here at the end, which I'll be adding later in the course, will be an extra credit assignment. So the last week of the course, um, right before finals week, so that last week will be a extra credit assignment that will be optional for you to do. So if you would like the extra credit points, that's fine, you can do it. If not, you won't be required to. But that will be in the last, and that I will be adding to the course um, as we progress. So about halfway through the course, I'll have an assignment for an extra credit assignment for you to do. And that's pretty much the whole Blackboard course. So you can see it's um, pretty straightforward as you follow the checklist. You know in the first week what you need to do. Make sure you get your scanning software. Make sure you understand how to format the email subject line. Um, give me your first assignment will be to give me a mock assignment. So you can take a piece of paper, write something on, send a message, say hi, whatever you'd like. Take it, picture, scan it with your phone convert it to a PDF, and then email it to me. And that way I know that you are now set to do the assignment. So the first week is really just familiarize yourself with the course, make sure you can view the videos, make sure that you know how to send um, an assignment to me. Um, and then after that, you can just go through and start with unit one and get right into the book. So if you have any questions, if uh, you find any problems, I highly recommend for technical problems, if for some reason you're not seeing the videos or you're not being able to navigate the course, please contact the YSU Tech Desk, which you can find on the YSU website. Um, they can help you with technical, the sort of technical end. If you're having a problem with material, the course material, I would assume that the, the intro module here that you're in right now is not going to be particularly difficult. Um, but if you do, as we get into units one, two, and three, and so forth, make sure you contact me right away if you have any problems. And so that's all I have here. Good luck with the course, and I hope you enjoy it.